Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a grid and straighten up architectural photos in Photoshop. Hey there, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna show you how to create a grid and customize it in Photoshop so you can analyze lines. This is super helpful anytime you have a photo with a building in it. We're also gonna show you a few different methods for correcting the perspective and make sure those building lines are perfectly straight. So here's our image for today. Now, if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, just download this sample image and you can do that following the link right down below. So the first thing I wanna do, you can probably tell that these lines are not straight vertical, like exactly like we want them, but I wanna get a grid to see what I'm doing. Now, there are actually a couple of different ways to do this. So the first way is using rulers and guides. Go ahead and hit Control or Command R, and that's your keyboard shortcut for rulers. So if you see these rulers up here and to your left, there you go, you know you've done it right. So Control or Command R. Now once you've got your rulers up, you can simply just click and drag from the side to create a guide. So these little green things here, these are guides. You can just drag them from the top or from the right hand side, and it puts them there in your image. Now you can temporarily hide them by hitting Control or Command H, and then Control or Command H to get them back. And if this is the first time you hit Control or Command H, it'll say, do you wanna hide Photoshop or hide the extras? Just click hide extras. So this is a good way to analyze your lines. You know, is something up or down? Is it vertical, horizontal? You can kind of move these around your image. To get rid of them, you can just simply click and drag them, boop, right off of there. There we go, right back there and hit Control or Command R. Okay, so that's one way to see your guides. Now the next way is to create an actual grid. So we're gonna go to view, we're gonna go down here to show and over here to grid. Let's go ahead and check that box. Now this is the default grid, which is like a lot of little lines. I don't know, kind of helpful, kind of not that helpful. There's, there's so many lines, I'm like getting kind of caught up in it. I wanna change this a little bit. So we're gonna to go to our preferences. Let's go to Photoshop, down to preferences, and we're gonna go down to uh, grids uh, guides, grids, and slices. There we go. Now here we can choose our grid. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna do by pixel, and we can say, I want it to be every one pixel. So this is gonna say, you know, you can change it. So let's say every 10 pixels, I want a grid. Now you can also subdivide it. In this case, it's gonna subdivide it by four. So you're gonna get four sub grids within what, each one. I'm just gonna change this to one because I, I don't really want that. So let's go ahead and zoom in. So what this is doing is if you zoom in like super duper duper, each one of these little squares, let me just move this down so we can kind of see what we're doing. Each one of these little squares is a pixel in our image. So every 10 pixels, we got a grid. And you can adjust this number based on what size image you're actually working on. You know, if you just kind of want them to be there, but a little bit less obtrusive, just increase that number and then you've got a different size grid on your image. Now you can also change the color. Let's go ahead where it says uh, custom. We're gonna choose, choose a light green. Ooh, that's a bit blinding right now. You can go ahead and hit custom and then just choose something that's a little bit, uh, there we go, a little bit less obtrusive. That color looks pretty good. And of course here you can change the style of the grid. You can make them these dotted lines just a little bit uh, less to look at. And then take a look, this is actually just the points of the grid themselves. Now, if I de decrease this, there we go, and maybe make them like light gray, you might see them. They're just tiny little points right there. It's actually kind of hard to see this. So, uh, you know, it, there's one like right there and right there, but I pretty much can't see that. So we're just gonna <laughs> stick with the original one and we're good to go. So you can get back to this at any point in time. Now, when you have your grid up, you can also hit Control or Command H to hide that grid at any point in time. So now let's get to what we can actually do with a grid. Well, we're gonna analyze this image. So looking at this, uh, you know, this line is straight up and down. It's pretty obvious that this building here is not straight up and down, right? It's like uh, obviously not perfect on the grid. And with architectural shots, you want it as close to that as, as you can possibly get. You know, not always are you gonna get something perfect, but uh, something pretty close would be nice. So there are a few different ways that you can warp and transform your images. We're gonna start off with just like the most crude, most powerful methods, and that's just using the transform tool. 
So let's go ahead and duplicate our background layer. There we go. My grid is just too visible right now. So let's just go back to our preferences here. I'm gonna say, you know what, our grids, let's just change the color here. Cause I'm like, that's a little bit too much. I don't know. Do I have to, do I gotta choose a custom color here? Looks like it. There we go. I can still see this, but it's not like so in the way. Perfect. So I created a duplicate of my background layer. Now there are really fantastic uh, transformation tools built into Photoshop. Just hit Control or Command T and then right click and you can go to perspective. So here we can do perspective. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Now, when you're in perspective mode, then if I grab this top right one, check this out. It's actually uh, changing my entire image based on perspective, which is a lot of the time what you want. Now you don't have to make these changes, you know, huge in order to get what you need done like that, like just, you can see just that little bit of a change uh, pretty much solved our issue. So there we go, let's hit enter. Uh, we're gonna zoom in and just now check it against the, the grid here. Looks like we could go a little bit more than that. And then sometimes you might need to rotate this around as well. So you can hit control the command T for your transform. And then if you just bring your cursor right up to the edge, you can do some rotation around there as well. So I like this method because it really lets you do quite a bit. You can also, by the way, just hold control or command. So if you hit control or command T, first step, then hold control or command, you can click on just a corner here and then look at this, I can just take that corner and really do quite a bit with it. So if your image is really pretty skewed, you can just use these for like big, big transformations. So I like those tools because you can do so much with them but there's actually a tool that pretty much does this automatically for you as well. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna make that layer invisible for now. We're gonna duplicate our background layer. It's under your camera raw filter. So we're gonna just make sure we're selected on the duplicate. I always like to keep my background layer intact. We're gonna select that duplicate. We're gonna to go to filter down to camera raw filter. There we go. And here in camera raw filter, this is where we can do all kinds of fun stuff like adjust our highlights. Right now I'm seeing this giant red spot. This is telling me I've got some information that's blown out in my highlights. I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I just wanna fix the perspective. So we're gonna go to this tool right up here, the transform tool. Boom, transform tool, super cool. It allows us to do vertical transformations, horizontal transformations. We can rotate, we can change the pixel aspect ratio. You can scale it and you can offset it. Okay, up, up and down. All right, I'll just hold Alt or Option and then click on this reset. Now, the easiest way to do this is just click right here where it says A for auto, boop, click that, and it pretty much just does the job for you. And within this uh, mode, there's a grid here and you can adjust your grid sizing here as well, just to double check it. So let's go ahead and turn the auto uh, off by clicking on this little X and then back on, and it's going to do the job for you, which is like, thank you. You can also tell it to make sure that the horizontal lines are level. So it's gonna take anything that's near horizontal and do those. This is gonna take priority over vertical lines. And this is gonna force a uh, level horizontal and vertical perspective. It's gonna force all that. <laughs> you might get something that looks a little bit weird. Actually, this doesn't look weird. It just kind of needs to be like cropped uh, to, to really get the most out of it. But most of the cases, I just recommend hitting auto. So let's go ahead and hit okay there and take a look at the before and after. Now my grid is still here. I don't need it because I just like fixed the problem. So you can go to view, show, and then just turn off your grid. Or don't forget, you can hit control or command H at any time. So let's see, here's our before and the after. So easy, right? We use the grid to kind of analyze our photo. And then you just go to filter, down to camera raw filter, check out this little perspective tool and hit auto and you're done. It's gonna fix your perspective for you. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you enjoyed it, we've got so many full length tutorials available on flurn.com. We got a monthly subscription so you can get access to everything. It's super duper awesome. And if you wanna get a free tutorial from YouTube every single week, just click that subscribe button on your screen right now. We'll send it right to you. Thanks again. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.